الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد We ask Allah the Almighty to bless us all with ikhlas with thabad ala sunnah and nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I hope sincerely that this can be a source of guidance for those people who speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion without knowledge and those people who make da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even with sincerity but without knowledge and to those who speak about the Qur'an and the tafsir of the Qur'an or the meaning of the Qur'an or the meaning of the suhuf or the meaning of the mushaf without knowledge without proper Islamic education because this shows a lack of tarbiyah and it shows that we are in need as Muslims of sahih Islamic knowledge sound Islamic knowledge that comes from the scholars because what we see and hear today is in fact an assault upon Islam and an assault upon Islamic knowledge why is that? because we hear people reviving the Aqidah of the Mu'tazila reviving the Aqidah of the Jahmiya reviving the Aqidah of many of these groups that cease to exist but there is an effect of their creed and why generally this is due to a lack of knowledge not intentionally not intentionally by some of our brothers and sisters in the West who invite people to Islam but who are in need of further study before speaking and I wanted to read these very beautiful benefits by Allama Sheikh Salih bin Fawzan Hafidhullah Ta'ala in his explanation of a very important book by Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab Rahimahullah Ta'ala. This book is called Usul al-Iman. And in the chapter contained, uh, in the chapter in the book, which is called Tahrim Tafsir al-Quran bil Rai, it is the chapter which is entitled the prohibition of explaining the Qur'an by opinion, by rai. And he brought two a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, or two uh, hadithan min an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first hadith on, Abi, uh, on Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam من قال في القرآن برأيه فليتبوء مقعده من النار رواه ترمذي. In the first hadith, the hadith of Ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنهما, who said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, whoever speaks uh, about the Quran based upon his opinion. Then let him take his seat in the hellfire. And in another narration, وفي رواية من قال في القرآن بغير العلم فليتبوء مقعده أو مقعده من النار رواه ترمذي. In another narration in Tirmidhi as well, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, whoever speaks about the Quran without knowledge then let him take his seat in the hellfire. That's a reminder for us. It happens. Sometimes we speak, we want to use a verse in a certain way, but we have to ask ourselves, are we using it in accordance with how the Quran explains itself, or how the Sunnah explains the Quran, or how the Sahaba understood this verse, or how the Tabi'een understood this verse or how it is understood in the Arabic language even so before we speak we have to be cautious and we have to have knowledge Allama bin Fawzan Hafidhullah Ta'ala said regarding this and we'll try to be as brief as possible he said في هذين حديثين 
al-wa'id shadid ala man fassar al-Qur'an bi ra'ihi duni ruju'i ila al-masadir al-tafsir al-sahiha wa li hadha shaddada sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala man yufassar al-Qur'an bi ghayr al-ilm wa dhakara annahu astawjaba dakhul al-nar faqal فَلْيَتَّبَوَّأَ مَقْعَدُهُ مِنَ النَّارِ وَجَاءَ فِي رُوَايَةٍ أَنَّهُ قَالْ مَنْ قَالَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ بِرَائِهِ فَأَصْصَابَ فَقَدْ أَخْطَى Shaykh Salah bin Fawzan Hafidh Allah Ta'ala said this alam Rabbani who we should continue to benefit from while he's still alive بإذن الله تعالى بإذن الله تعالى He said in these two hadith is a very severe threat of punishment wa'id shadid upon the person who explains the Quran with his opinion without returning to those sources for tafsir that are sound those sound sources of tafsir and from this the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made a stern warning for the person who explains the Qur'an without knowledge. And he mentions that this person necessitates entering the hellfire. As he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then take his seat in the fire. And in another narration, whoever speaks about the Qur'an with his, based upon his opinion, and he was correct, then he, is mis then he is mistaken. Then he has made a mistake. Imam Fozan then went on to say, and that this hadith was mentioned also uh, Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned in the beginning of his tafsir, and he said that this hadith was jayid in his isnad. And he said, in this, then uh, Imam Fozan, he said, again, a repetition of what he already said, that this is a stern warning for those people who explain the Quran based upon their opinions and without knowledge. And he said, he gives us a faida and a, some of the principles. And this is why we go to those major scholars, because they give us those kawai, they give us those principles and that asul, they give us the foundation. So that way we have the tools to be able to discern the truth from falsehood. And we have the tools to be able to make ahkam wa istinbat min al ayat wa hadith that we're able to use those verses of the Quran and use those hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make ahkam, to make rulings based upon those principles that the ulama leave us. Imam Fuzan said, he said, يفسر القرآن يفسر بأربع أشياء ذكرها ابن كثير رحمه الله تعالى في أول تفسيره that he said that the Quran is explained by four things or four different ways and Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned this in the beginning of his tafsir. He said, Al awwal tafsir al Quran the Quran, li anna kalam Allah yufasir ba'dahu ba'dan. He said, the first way is that we explain the Quran by the Quran, by other verses of the Quran. That's how we look for the meaning of verses. And he said, because the Quran is the speech of Allah and explains itself. Meaning some verses explain other verses. That right there, that principle right there, is incredibly important for us and important for our brothers and sisters who involve themselves with da'wah who have not had the benefit of seeking knowledge possibly with the ulama. And that becomes clear from some of the statements that they make. May Allah forgive us in them and guide us in them. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Because in that statement, Imam Fozan said, as the Salaf uh, said in countless uh, athar, 
that the Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Hatta yasma kalam Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for us that the Quran is his speech. It is the divine, divinely revealed speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the real speech of Allah. So the person who picks up the Quran and then says, This book is not the Quran. It is just some ink. It is just a binded pages. It is this. It was printed here. It was printed there. It was written by hand and this and that and the other. Is traversing a very dangerous path. Yes, that is ink. Yes, that is a, a binding. And the binding in the ink is created. But the book that we have before us is the Quran. And it has rulings pertinent to it. The Quran has rulings pertinent to it. Meaning that this is the Qur'an and we come closer and worship Allah through that book by the kalam of Allah, the speech of Allah we recite it in our um, prayers and it has certain rulings as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that when sh traveling to enemy lands that you should not travel with the Qur'an and we also know that we should not take the Qur'an, this book in filthy places like the bathroom and so forth so it shows us that this is the divine speech of Allah and that if you step on this book intentionally you've disbelieved you've left the religion out of necessity so how is it that someone would say that this is either not the kalam of Allah not the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that it is a statement of the speech of Allah or it is a recitation of the speech of Allah, or all these other innovated statements that the Salaf did not know, that is a serious and dangerous thing. The second way in which we explain the Qur'an is, Allama Fawzan said, Athani tafsir al-Qur'an bi sunnat al-Nabawiyya. Li'anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mubayyana lil-Qur'an قال تعالى وأنزلنا إليك ذكر لتبين للناس ما نزل إليهم. The second way in which we explain the Quran is with the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم because the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم came as to clarify, explain, and make the tafsir of the Quran, and he was a living uh, his manners were uh, exhibited the Qur'an alayhi salatu wasalam and Allah says in this regard that we have sent down to you this reminder in order to make clear for the people what we have revealed to them Allahu Akbar that's the speech of Allah a thalith, the third thing tafsir sahaba ridwan Allahi alayhim لأنهم تلقوا عن عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تفسير القرآن. And the third way is that we explain the Quran by the explanation of the Sahaba. May Allah be pleased with them all, because they received their tafsir and their explanation from the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. They were there when revelation was being revealed. They asked questions regarding those ayats that they didn't understand. Radiallahu ta'ala majma'in. And the fourth way is tafsir tabi'in. لِأَنَّهُمْ أَخَذَ تَفْسِيرَ عَنَ sahaba عَنْ صَحَابَةِ رَسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ Then, uh, so the fourth way is taking tafsir of the sahaba. Is the explanation of the uh, is the explanation of the tabi'in those uh, those who took knowledge from the Sahaba radiAllahu taala anhum ajma'in and may Allah have mercy upon the tabi'in ridwan Allahi alayhim or rahmatullahi alayhim. So taking the tafsir the fourth way is tafsir of the tabi'in. That's because they took their tafsir their explanation from the Sahaba. Of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, radiyallahu taala anhu majmain, and then Imam Fozan said, and he said, there's a fifth way, and he said, and that is by logat al-Arabiya, by logat al-Arabiya, that by explaining 
the Quran by the Arabic language. And then the Sheikh mentioned a lot of other benefits, but we'll keep it brief. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses what we mention from the ulama to be a source of guidance for us all and a reminder for us all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and our brothers and sisters in Islam. But it is imperative, and that's why I made this 10B, that we remind ourselves to speak in accordance with our ability when giving da'wah. That if you have studied something, speak in accordance with what you've studied. If you haven't studied anything, and Allah has given you the gift to speak about some matters of the religion or to invite non-Muslims, then restrain yourself and refrain from speaking about those things that you don't have knowledge to speak about. it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a severe uh, warning for those people. And the Prophet sallallahu likewise, alayhi salatu wa salam, made, uh, described a severe punishment for those people who speak without knowledge, especially speaking about the Quran without knowledge, and speaking about Islam without knowledge, that it is a very serious offense. Because what? What is the origin of the religion? Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also mentioned that in Sahih Muslim, in the beginning it's mentioned, in the Muqaddimah, that the person who speaks about, who narrates about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without knowledge, or lies about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would take his seat in the hellfire. Just as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about explaining the Qur'an bil rai. So this shows us the importance of not speaking about Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul ﷺ without knowledge. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with fiqh fi deen. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that I said was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabi and the Muhammad.